God's people said? Amen. Say amen again. Amen. One time for the Holy Ghost. Amen. amen. We thank God for our youth choir. Amen. Singing this morning. Amen. And four of our little ones. Amen. Leading their songs. Amen. Amen. They did an awesome, awesome job. And if we keep encouraging them, amen, they'll just do better and better and better and better. Amen. Amen. We are in uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Amen. And we thank God for your pink ribbons. Amen. To bring awareness. Amen. And uh, please, please, please wear these proudly. Uh, talk about them when people ask you. Amen. To go out and get checked. Amen. Amen. It's someone who's had someone in their family who's battled the breast cancer fight. Amen. It is a fight that you can win. Amen. Amen. I thank God for uh, Sister Anderson and her inspirational moment. Amen. Somebody ought to say amen. They were encouraged on today. Amen. Stand with me. Amen. Turn to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16, find verse 13. When you get there, say amen. amen. When you see it on the screen, say amen. amen. If you're alive, say amen real loud. Amen. I just wanted to know if you were alive. There you find these words recorded. It says, when Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, who do men say that I am? The son of man am. So they said, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, some say others say Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter and on this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he commanded his disciples that they should tell no one that he was Jesus the Christ. If you don't mind, this morning on my way to heaven, I just want to preach from this thought. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Have you ever had that moment where you're minding your own business and somebody comes in running their mouth and you have to look at them and say, what are you talking about? You, you didn't understand the rumor. You didn't understand the subject matter. And so you look at them with a perplexed look on your face and you say, what are you talking about? Well, here you have Jesus now with his disciples and he is asking them literally, so what y'all talking about? Uh, what, 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 is, what is the rumor on the street? What's, 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 what's the word out there? And let me help somebody out. Anytime someone asks you what is the rumor on the street, what they're really saying is you ain't nothing but a gossip that went over some of y'all head. You see, you would only ask that question to somebody who is on the street, who is out there talking. So Jesus asked him, what are the folks talking about? And I thought it would be good with New Hope if I asked you guys this question this morning. What are you talking about? Are you speaking into or out of? <laughs> Are you speaking into somebody's life? Are you making deposits in their life with your mouth? Or are you taking money out of their life? Are you taking life out of them? Are you speaking into their life? Or are you speaking out of their life? Are you getting closer? Or are you getting further away? Not because you love the Lord, but because of your subject matter. Are you speaking into or out of? Are you talking them up or are you talking them down? Some of y'all have the uh, uncanny ability to give a compliment and put down all at the same time. I'm talking to some of you good nasty folk out there that you look at somebody and say, you look good today. 
what you're really saying is that the other day when you saw me, I was messed up, but today, I, 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 I look good. That's one of them uncanny compliments, yeah, drawbacks, and you got to be careful always tearing people down. You ever notice that the folks that tear folks down the most are the folks that got the lowest self-esteem already. Be careful trying to build yourself up by tearing other folk down. It's a sorry rascal that got to talk about everybody else. Why? When you look in the mirror, what do you see? Are you talking them up? I already know I'm sorry, so you telling me I'm sorry ain't going to help me be good. Uh, I already know I, I got issues, so you telling me that ain't going to help me. You got to understand, you got to build somebody up. In fact, there's some folk here that can testify. The only reason you are who you are is because somebody built you up. They told you you was going to be somebody. They prayed over you. They spoke to you like you were somebody. And sooner or later, what they spoke came into existence talking them up. In fact, husbands, let me help you out. Let me help you out. If you always talk your wife down, don't be surprised when you get a low-down wife. Ah, preach up in here, Davis. I'll pat my own self on the back. If you always talk about how ugly she is, don't be surprised if you roll over one day and find she really is that ugly. You got to talk them up. Mothers, you better be careful always talking about your kids, remind you of their daddy. And they already know you hate their daddy. Can't say man, just say ouch. I'll preach anyway. You, you know how you get. The moment you get mad, you want to tell him, gee, just like your father, you ain't going to be nothing like he ain't nothing. And then you surprised when you got to go visit him five years later in the penitentiary. Your words have power. And if you don't watch your words, you're going to find yourself in a mess because you spoke that mess into existence. Are you talking them up? Or are you talking them down? Hey, man, we always got something negative to say. They, them kids wear their pants so low. Always sagging. Got four, five earrings in their ear. Them girls wearing them short skirts just, just, just looking nasty. Come on, walk up in here with me. We always talking down on somebody, but don't let us go to your yearbook. You always talking about everybody else's little skirt. Don't let us go to your yearbook and see you in 1965 with your mini skirt on. You, you always talking about some boy looking like some. Don't let us go to your photo album and turn to page five and see you in your rebellious state. You better be careful for getting that you've been through rebellion yourself. And you better remember that if God brought you through your craziness, it's the same God that'll bring them through theirs. And if you stay with them and keep on praying and speaking their life, God will turn it around. Uh, you know how you know how you get. Look at her over there with all them kids. They all got different daddies. But your oldest child ain't got your husband's last name. Ah, uh, getting quiet up in here. Ah. Uh, Look at her. She got all them kids. She ain't never been married, but you forgot you didn't raise your oldest one. Uh, you can't say amen because you got to say out. Some of y'all got some sisters that really ain't your sisters. They really your daughters, but you can't tell the story. And you better be careful throwing the rocks out of glass houses because you'll mess up your whole house. Ain't nobody in here holy. Ain't nobody in here perfect. But by the grace of God, there go I. And so I'd rather keep my mouth shut than open up my mouth and insert my foot. Are you talking them up or putting them down? You can always find something wrong with somebody else when you don't look at yourself but is there anybody in here that's in a makeover journey 
and you ain't got time to look at nobody else because your own makeover journey is in process. Anybody look at their own life and say, I'm not what I used to be, but I sure ain't what I should be. And I can't talk about you. Well, I'm trying to make this old thing over and I'm going to stay on the potter's wheel until the father gets through with me, but I'm not going to sit on the wheel pointing at somebody else. What are you talking about? Are you speaking life or death? What, what are you? What are, what are you? What are you? What are you talking about? That's, are you cussing and praising? What? 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 What are you? What are you? What are you? What are you? What are you talking about? Are you talking about everybody at the church and inviting them to come to your church? What are you, what are you, what are you, what are you, what are you talking about? Are you talking about how lonely you is and how depressed you are and will nobody love you and you can't find nobody and everybody keep leaving you? Ain't no good men out there. What are you what are you what are you talking about? You see the problem with the church is that we talk too much about the wrong stuff. Preach up in here, Davis. I'm doing the best I can. We talk too much about the wrong stuff. Is the first phone call you make a gossiping phone call? Or the first call you got is a praise report. What is coming out of your mouth when you find yourself in trouble? Is the first thing, Lord, help, or is it you blanket and blank? What are you talking about? Because whatever comes out of your mouth is coming out of your heart. And the problem is some of y'all talking about you going to go to heaven and God know your heart and you going to bust hell because he really does. You gonna speak life, or you gonna speak death? Huh? I got, I gotta ask you what you're talking about. You see, the problem is when people call you, you let other folks dictate the conversation. But you gotta understand the power you have in paying your phone bill. Let me help you out. Let me help you out. Let me help you out. <laughs> pay the bill to 3711991 so you can't call my phone with no foolishness cuz it's just as i hit that accept button i can hit the end button and if you call me with some craziness we will have technical difficulties every single time i will drive in a dead spot every single time why i need somebody that's going to help me lift up the lord not pull me down i need somebody that's talking about the goodness of God, not cussing everybody out. I need somebody that understands the glory and not worrying about everybody's story. Jesus says, what are they talking about? What y'all, what y'all, what y'all talking about? Some say, well, we, we had a couple conversations. Somebody said you was just a prophet. I was in another conversation. You know, can I contemporize this? What did they say? Is listen, I was I was at the bingo hall, and they said you was a prophet. But when I was at the casino, they said that you was a good preacher at the casino. At the casino, when I stopped by the glass house to get some of that Patron, don't 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 I don't leave nobody out. Some of that Jack Daniels. Some of that cool six point. When I was when I was at the glass house, somebody said you were Elijah or somebody else. But when I got around my crazy relatives at the picnic, somebody just said you was a pretty cool dude. So Jesus, what do you say that I am? What are you saying about me? You've been following me now for a while. You've seen my miracles. You've seen signs and wonders. What do you say? And one of the jokers said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. I wish I had somebody that would claim who God is, no matter where you at. 
is not that you ain't going to be at the bingo hall. Amen, walls. It ain't that you ain't going to be at the casino. Because some of y'all got some memberships. It ain't that you ain't going to be at the glass house. Because some of y'all got some sipping problems. But no matter where you are, when somebody asks you, who is Jesus? You ought to stand up and say, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Turner, Turner, let me, let me, let me, let me help y'all out. Let me help y'all. Let me tell y'all what, what some folk, what some folk told me. They said, Davis, when I catch him, the believer with his drink in his hand, and I ask him who he is, he, he don't want to say nothing because he got his drink in his hand. Y'all, 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 y'all still with me? <laughs> when he's at that machine pulling that one arm. Some of y'all so ladies, you won't even pull the one arm. You just push the button. Preach up in here, Davis. And they ask him who Christ is. Y'all don't want to talk about it. You got to understand, he is Christ. Whether you are in the crack house or the white house. He is Christ. Whether you got a drink in your hand or ain't nothing in your hand. He is Christ on your best day and your worst day. Because him being Christ is not affected by your foolishness. So you might as well tell the truth. He is Christ. My sins do not negate his Christhood. In fact, my sins glorifies who he is because it was my sins that hung him on a cross. He did not hang for my goodness. He hung on the cross because of my sins. No, Reverend, I don't. I don't like that, but we talked on Wednesday. Paul said that I may know him in the power of his suffering and in the glory of his resurrection, that I may know him on the cross saying, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do, but also at the right hand of the Father, when he says those sins are covered in my blood, that I may know him, and the power of knowing him is that I know him on the cross, I know him in the grave, but I also know him on the right hand of the Father, that I may know, I may know him, and because I know him, he also knows me. Ah, I'm trying to get up out of here. This thing's starting to feel good to me. He knows me. I ain't talking about the church me that the rest of y'all can see. <laughs> he knows me. I ain't talking about the family reunion you with the t-shirt on. He knows me. Every proclivity, every issue, every lie, every sin, every failure, every mistake, he knows me. And he still said, Father, they're saved in my name. I still go to the cross even though I know them. In fact, Father, I am obedient to the cross because I know them. Because if I don't go to the cross, they'll never make it to heaven. If I don't go to the cross, sins will never be forgiven. So even though I know them, I still let them put their nails in my hand. I still let them kneel on my feet. I still let them spit on my face. Because if I don't stand in the gap, they'll never make it over. What are you what are you talking about? The story says there was a rich man who one day became blind. 
And one day he just disappeared. Nobody heard from the rich man. Nobody seen the rich man. Nobody know where the rich man was. He was just in obscurity. Ashamed because he couldn't see no more. Wouldn't, didn't want the money because he didn't live up to the money. Just living in obscurity. He came into contact with a little old country doctor. That country doctor healed him. Rich man said, I can go back now and be rich. I can go back now and run my companies. And man, if you don't mind, let me put billboards up with your name on it. Let me run commercials with your name on it. Let me brag. Let me brag on you. Country doctor said, no. I don't need you to brag on me. Just do me one favor. If you want to really pay me back, don't brag on me, don't write me no check. If you want to really pay me back, just tell everybody you come into contact with that you was lost, but I found you. You was blind, but I made you see. <laughs> You ain't got to brag on me. Just, just, just tell them. Tell them what I did for you. Y'all missed that, but let me help you out. Why you keep trying to brag on Jesus? Jesus sent me here to say, it ain't about the big old cross that's around your neck. It ain't about the big old Bible that you're trying to carry. Just tell everybody that you come into contact with that you were lost, but Jesus found you. You was blind, but Jesus Jesus, open up your eyes. Just tell everybody you come into contact with what the Lord did for you. And what you're going to find out is if you lift him up, he'll drive folks. Is there anybody here? Is there anybody here that can testify it was Jesus? Who saved your soul? It was Jesus that made you whole. And I don't want to brag on him. I just want to tell you. I just want to tell you what he did for me. And before I leave you, I just want to tell you that he didn't run out of blessings when he blessed me. He didn't run out of healings when he healed me. He didn't run out of deliverance when he delivered me. And he is not a respecter of persons. So whatever you need, there is a balm in Gilead. Whatever you need, his name is Christ. Christ. On solid rock I stand. Sinking, sinking sand. What are you talking about? I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. I'm just talking about Jesus. Why? Because that's the only doctor I know that ain't worried about your insurance. I wish I had somebody. He ain't worried about your prognosis. In fact, the worse the case, the better he is. And so I want to just tell you about Jesus and what he's done for me. I could tell you what he did in the Bible, but you don't know these people, but you know me. And I can tell you, I was on my way to hell, but Jesus stepped in right on time. I, I can tell you about Jonah. I can tell you about Barabbas, but let me tell you about Gwen Anderson. If she was here today, she'd tell you breast cancer had her. Down on her way to dead, but God stepped in. Yes, he did. Just tell your story. I may not know all 66 books of the Bible. I 
I may not know the Pentateuch. I may not know the Old Testament. I may not know the letters, uh, the epistles. I may not know the Gospels, but I do know the 67th book, the book called Terrell. And I can tell you from that book what God has done for me. Anybody else got a book in the word that you don't mind telling nobody? Let me tell you about my book. I was on my way to hell, but I got good news. Jesus stepped in. So while you trying to get your speech together, and while you trying to get your hoop together, and get your three points together. Let me tell you what Pookie, Ray Ray, and Kiki want to know. Did the Lord do anything for you? Let me tell you what Pookie told me to ask you. What has he done for you lately? That's what Pookie told me to tell you. Let me tell you about John the Baptist. Pookie said, what about you? John the Baptist didn't grow up in the hood. You did. What has he done for you? The one book that all of us ought to know well is the one book that we tell the less about. The one book. Not the one that's inside cover to cover. This book that I know better than anybody else is the one book that I tell the least to. Because I'm ashamed of where he found me. Let me help you out. Your friends know where he found you. Because they was at the same place. Ain't nobody surprised that you got high. Ain't nobody surprised that you were drunk. Ain't nobody surprised you've been delivered while they was drinking and smoking with you. I'm going to be like my suit. Psh. Psh. You worried about somebody looking down on you. How, how are they going to look down on you when they was at the same place you was at? Huh? You worried about somebody talking about you. Listen, they already talking about you. Why? Because when you ain't, when over, uh, the other person ain't around, y'all talking about him. So guess what happened when you ain't around? They talking about you. It is a like a merry-go-round. Sooner or later, your turn will come up. I got one book that I know better than anybody else. And I got to start telling y'all about my book. Because why? You can relate to my book. Some of y'all look at me and say, Reverend, I ain't never had no withered hand. Praise God. I ain't never had no issue of blood, blood for 12 years. Praise God. You can't relate to that. But you had something else. And there's somebody in this sanctuary had the same thing you had. And if they tell you about their book and tell you what God did for them, you'll be able to look at them totally different. But not only look at them, you'll look at him totally different. And you will say, if God healed her breast cancer, why won't he heal mine? Y'all miss that. Y'all miss that. I got to find out what she did. Why? I'm going to do what she did plus him. If you know better, you ought to do better. What are you, what are you talking about? I want to change our language. I want to change our vocabulary and I want to change our topics. Because when the body of Christ start talking about the things of Christ, <sighs> when we start talking about the miracles of Christ, people will stop thinking it happens every 35,000 years and realize it happens every day. <sighs> is, there, is, there, is, there, is there any true miracle folk up in here? Is there anybody in here that know you ought to be dead? Come on, come on. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not talking about y'all with that pretty testimony. I need to... 
I need to talk to some real folk. Is there anybody here huh, that you know you should be dead? I need you to stand on your feet if you should be dead. Is there anybody here know that you should be in the lockup? You should be cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, but you are in your right mind. I need you to stand up. Is there anybody here that you know 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 you ought to be homeless, but you got a roof over your head? I just need you to stand up. I'm not talking about what I heard. I ain't talking about what I know. I am a living testimony. Should have been dead and gone, but the Lord. That's why I ain't got time to talk about crazy stuff. Why? I'm on borrowed time. Nobody on borrowed time got time to talk about stupidity. I know what he's done for me. I'm that 67th book. And so are you. And when you start telling your story, don't sensationalize it. Don't add nothing to it. Don't be adding no Hollywood lights. If he found you at the crack house, tell them where he found you at. If you know Praise God. That you used to be homeless, sleeping in your car. Tell the truth. Tell them, man, I ain't got nothing but a two-bedroom apartment, but you don't know where I came from. Huh? You see these little three suits I got now, but you don't know what I had before. When I had nothing but a pair of slacks and a shirt, you don't know what God did for me. Your book. So when Jesus comes to you and say, what? What you talking about? You look at him and say, Lord, I'm talking about you being the Christ. <laughs> the son of the living God. That's what I'm talking about. Who you talking to? Everybody I come into contact with. I want everybody to know that you're the Christ. And so I'll keep telling my story as long as they want to talk to me. And if they don't talk to me, here you go. I'm so crazy, I'm just going to tell it to the grass. I'm just going to walk around talking about Jesus. I'm going to do it until what I'm talking about manifests itself. Hello, somebody. If I'm sick, I'm just going to keep talking about healing until I get some good news. I'm just going to keep talking about healing. Until I hell somebody, I'm gonna keep talking about healing until I get it. May not be nothing, but your blood pressure went down. Praise God! I knew He was gonna heal me. I'm gonna keep talking until I get some good news. Stand with me, you might be here.